Ah, home for the summer. Time to sit on my ass and watch cartoons. Hold up. You watched something RoboCop related without me. Now you gotta watch something RoboCop related with me. Badass Matt, you know you can't actually force me to watch anything? That's just a silly cliche internet critics came up with. I can watch whatever I want. You wanna watch a RoboCop cartoon? Absolutely. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones around to be had. Today's episode, Robocop, the animated series. Hello creeps, I'm called Matt, and welcome back to the month of animation, where we take a look at animated series based on movies that did not need kids shows based on them. And I don't think it's any secret that I love Robocop. Robocop is one of those bizarre properties that Orion and whoever else was in charge of marketing seemed to think was a kids film despite the hard R rating. Bobby. Yes, I do. Don't move. I was. Oh. <laughs> ah! Robocop and the Ultra Police, each sold separately with Robocaps. What even were the 80s? Isn't this the same time we had to invent PG-13 so we could sell Indiana Jones to kids? And it's worth noting that this isn't even the only animated series based on RoboCop. You may remember the RoboCop Christmas Special. Well, that was part of a series called RoboCop Alpha Commando from the late 90s. There were also at least two live-action shows. Yet somehow, before the live-action shows, before even the sequels, a children's cartoon was the very first follow-up to this movie. RoboCop was an animated series that ran 12 episodes in 1988, a year after the movie. It was supposed to run 13 episodes, but the production company Marvel Studios, yes, that Marvel Studios, used the budget for episode 13 to make a pilot for an X-Men cartoon, which never came to fruition, though eventually they got one in 1992. Hard to say if the pilot helped lead to that or not, but what I will say is Robocop better be in Infinity War Part 2. Today we're going to be looking at Episode 1, Crime Wave, directed by Tony Love, an animation director who worked on such shows as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the 80s Superman cartoon. The other director is Bill Hutton, who's directed three things, all three of which involved Tony Love. Seems most voice actors haven't been identified as any specific character, save Robocop and Anne. Robocop is voiced by Dan Hennessy, who's known for voicing Chief Quimbley on Inspector Gadget. And Anne is voiced by Susan Roman, known for voicing Sailor Jupiter. And with that said, here's Episode 1, Crime Wave. After being mortally wounded in the line of duty. Mortally wounded. Not killed. Episode 1, Crime Wave opens on some bad guys stealing plasma. Careful with this plasma. It's worth a fortune on the black market. Something you almost certainly would have discussed before you got here. Put down your weapons. You are under arrest. You heard the man! Drop him! Anne, sweetie, I love you, but you're not helping. Gotta love those bullets that just knock people over. I know I bring this up a lot, but I love how much 80s cartoons sold themselves on their violence despite not having any violence. That can wait! I, I can't shut this thing off! Let me try. Yeah, but hurry, or you'll need a new partner. No way to stop it. 
Chuck. Was that really the best possible way to resolve that? I mean, I guess it worked, but we're talking about an advanced computer man here, and the best he could come up with was fucking chunk that shit like a football as high as he can. You guys remember how in Robocop everything was so fresh and original, and even the more derivative scenes seemed sort of self-aware about their ridiculousness? Yeah, well, the next scene is Robocop unironically getting chewed out by his superiors. They never would have set that bomb if he hadn't gone charging in half cocked. I was following my prime directive. Prime directive? <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be out on patrol, Officer Lewis? Huh? Oh, sure, Sarge. <laughs> Come on, Murphy! I love that Robocop just goes on patrol. You'd think if you had a super advanced public protecting machine, you'd have it on a bunch of high profile cases. Hell, why is he even still patrolling Detroit? This is 88. Get that fucker fighting some Russians. But nah, just go make sure there are no punk kids graffitiing our city with Anne. Meanwhile, OCP claims Robocop is costing them too much money and they should shut him down. Guys, you created the most powerful robo-weapon to date. If you're losing money, it's your fault. And the creator of ED-209 is there pushing his new creation, ED-260. Oh, come on, that's just the ED-209 again. And it's just being used as a stoplight. Okay, it shoots some people for an illegal U-turn, but you could attach a turret to a red light camera and get the same effect. Oh. Vehicles will be towed at owner's expense. Owner's expense. Owner's expense. Attention! Do not panic. Normal traffic will soon be restored. I'd like to point out that this dude is showing a video, which he easily could have recorded just to showcase the ED 260's best features. And instead, he's showing this. Then again, this is probably the same idiot that used live rounds for a demonstration. I'll give them credit. His name is Dr. McNamara, the actual inventor of ED 209 from the movie. That's a pretty obscure character to remember, although I don't remember him having robot hands. After Robocop stops Ed 260, McNamara finds a gang called The Vandals. Congratulations, you win the award for least subtle name ever. Also, they have a robot dog, and I am not just gonna let that slide. How do they have a robot dog? There's also a lot of unnecessary arcade cabinet destruction in this scene. Serious business. Oh no, you got me. It's not like I could just walk up a flight of stairs and that thing would never be able to catch me. Believe that if crime goes unchecked in old Detroit, Robocop will be discredited. Or he might just arrest them. Actually, they get lucky and Robocop is being reprogrammed at the exact right time. Hey, can we talk about how Anne doesn't look much like Anne from the movie? They got Murphy pretty good, so what's up? Why can't you stop messing with his head, Dr. Tyler? He's a cop, not a guinea pig! And I don't recall her being such a hothead either. Anne was the cool collected one. What about my test? I have a job to do. Well, no way this could go poorly. The Vandals are wrecking a mall when Robocop shows up and uses a gun for its intended purpose. I mean, I'm not against destroying pointless art installments. Oh boy. Thank you. Ah! Holy fuck, they just burned Anne alive! Oh, she's just on the other side. I'll give her this, she's got some crazy reflexes. Hey, watch out! Somebody could get hurt! And, honey, he's holding a chainsaw. Any dude swinging chainsaws around doesn't care if he hurts you. Oh! Hey, hot dog! All you need now is a little mustard! Was that a joke? I, I don't get it! Then they ram a car into Robocop and the building collapses on him. The 
next one I build will be even better. <laughs> Murphy. Anne, Anne, you are not this useless. At least try and arrest them. Look, Robocop is fine, kinda. They can put him back together. Thanks to you, he might be offline for good. Maybe she's right. It is my fault. Um, how? You weren't the one who broke him. You weren't even the one who demanded he go on this mission. That's the beauty of being useless. When things go wrong, it's never your fault. Even Robocop proved ineffective against these modern-day barbarians. You see, this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Robocop is an utter failure. OCP should put a stop to Dr. Tyler's wasteful project at once. You may have a point there, Dr. McNamara. Yeah, he failed once out of a long and tired career. Best we move on to my invention, which has literally never worked. Also, I'm gonna say it, Robocop is just one dude. There's no reason you can't have a couple Ed 260s roaming around. I mean, apart from the fact that they're terrible. Resulting from this cancerous crime wave could cost the company millions. Nice alliteration. The crime wave that is hit old Detroit continues to plague the city. It's a virtual battleground as the police try to stop the vandals. Yeah, man, Detroit police have never had to deal with rowdy teenagers vandalizing things. No one can stop the Gildozer! Not even Robocop! Killdozer? Like... The 1974 movie Killdozer? That's not even a good pun, why have two people used it? Anyway, they break it to the gold reserve and... try to leave without any gold. I guess they are the vandals, not the bank robbers. Well, that definitely killed some innocent bystanders. Nice! He's as good as dead! What, a piece of metal hitting his head? Pretty sure he could survive that. In fact, depending on how tough that helmet is, a non-Robocop might survive that. Anne finally does something useful this episode and gasses them. And she falls over and they cuff her. Thanks for nothing, Anne. Robocop throws a few dudes around because he... Ahem. <clears throat> lost his gun. Short on weapons, he throws a metal pole at the Killdozer. Anyways, something happens and I guess the bad guys are defeated. Yeah, it's pretty unclear. Allow me. I will not make a sex joke, I will not make a sex joke, I will not make a sex joke. Dr. Claude, I mean Dr. McNamara, gives us a good old next time Robocop! Next time! And Robocop is told he needs to rest immediately, or it could be damaged irreversibly. Well, maybe so. But it's imperative you rest without delay. Is, is that how robotics work? I don't think resting is going to help a robot. Maybe just try repairing him? Sorry, Doc, but you can't keep a good man down. Or a machine. And that's the killer line we end the episode on. It was... Kinda lame. I mean, it's a fun 80s cartoon, but there are cartoons that do the same thing way better. Anything I enjoyed about this I could get from something far funnier like Transformers or Ninja Turtles. I'm not surprised this didn't last long. It does capture the aesthetic of the film pretty well and brings back a lot of the same characters even if it does change them a bit. And gets the short end of the stick here, going from an interesting and competent character who helps Murphy find his humanity, to a useless hothead sidekick. But really, this is exactly what I expected from a Robocop cartoon. It's unlikely I'll finish the other 11 episodes. There, I reviewed a Robocop thing with you, are you happy? For now. But I've got space monsters to fight. Huh. The fool actually thought I was badass, Matt. When in reality, it's me. Evil Matt! <gasps> Who? Pete, 
no one leaves here without signing a requisition form. There's no time for signing papers, kid. The clock's running out. Sorry, sir. I was only doing my job. Wait, were you wearing a realistic looking fake mustache over the fake mustache that you wear over your real mustache? No witnesses.